so there's soon going to be lots of video profits which are really wonderful. Um, so yeah, this is about uh, Enric Duran's uh, actions where he expropriated money from different bank entities and he was using the kind of, um, um, it was very easy to, to borrow money at that time, it was 2008. And so he, he kind of planned a way to, to borrow a lot of different amounts without without appearing as someone who had a lot of, a lot of loans already. And then he gave it all to different kind of um, social initiatives and cooperatives. And then he wrote all about it. And this was kind of the, the calling point for a lot of us in the, in the Catalonist co co Cooperative and in, in Fair Corp as well. That, that we, we kind of joined because of these, these, uh, these actions, because it was a lot of publicity. And also because there was a, a lot of different publications that, that were made by, by Enrique or by people, people in, in the cooperative movement and, and anarchist movement about what, what we, we wanted to do as an alternative. So it wasn't really a direct action just for the sake of stealing money from banks, but it was to, to do with creating an alternate economy from that action. So he wanted to use that money to create something alternative. And so it was like robbing from the, the rich to create an alternative society. So here's a video. I don't know if I can show video over here, but uh, try it. Ay ay ay. If it doesn't work, we can go back. No, no, it has the cable. Who knows? Yeah. And the hotspots. Yeah, there's yeah, there's the hotspot, there's the cable, there's the guest Wi-Fi. It's uh, okay. abundance. <laughs> Step for men, a big step for women. Too. <laughs> so, so basically, yeah. The other part of the of the kind of criticism that Fair Cop comes from is is this criticism of Bitcoin, and we were all kind of in for maybe a year, two years, um, in within the Catalan Cooperative and, and other people around the world. We all started looking at Bitcoin and trying to think, how can we, how can, how do we see this? Is it good or bad? And people really didn't really have a good, clear idea until maybe Califo, for example, they, at one point they banned Bitcoin, then they loved them again, and then it really people started taking on positions. So, yeah, as uh, Michel Ballons from the P2P Foundation said, he's, he said, well, it's, it's open source, so we can make something good from it. And so we were looking for a different kind of, um, different open source projects that were based on, on Bitcoin that could, could do something a bit more positive with it. And the things that we saw wrong with it is that, yeah, you have a very small amount of people who have most of Bitcoin, it's actually more in than, than most fiat systems. 
and uh, also it's based on mining, so it's based on the whole gold analogy, and so you're, you're, you're kind of carrying forward the same kind of stereotypes from, from, from normal financial systems. There's this um, researcher, uh, Jaya, who's, who's starting to analyze the different communities that are, that are involved in Bitcoin and Ethereum and, and uh, Faircoin now, and she's trying to do a comparison between how we actually um, achieve a consensus within our, within our groups and how participation actually works. And so she's really, really saying that in the Bitcoin world, is, uh, there's, there's a lot of this um, full confidence on algorithms. So the algorithm is the, the leader, and humans are always um, kind of, um, we're always flawed in some way or other, so, we're all, so we have to depend on algorithms to, to guide us. And so, so we really want to stay away from that as well. So we really want to keep the kind of consensus, decision-making, and, and uh, assembly-run aspect in some way. And so, yeah, the, the kind of freedom that you get in Bitcoin as well is, is kind of capitalist freedom to buy and to own. So we want to kind of step away from all these things. So also there's the, of course, the, the banking systems and the normal kind of, uh, kind of euros and, and dollars that we want to get away from. So we saw them as, obviously this is the, the main reason why we wanted to use a cryptocurrency. So we wanted to get rid of the, the point where we had to put money into a bank to send it to the other side of the world so it could be taken out of the bank again because it's the only way to send money to, to some other part of the world that we want to trade with. So we wanted to, to get rid of that part of the equation and, and substitute that with something more socially just. So, um, yeah, it's not, it's not based on debt as well. So you, you, there's actually a finite amount of fair coin in the world. And, and we don't expect it to grow. So a bit like with, with Bitcoin, the, the, the amount of currency is, is always stable. Um, so then, yeah, Faircoin is trying to be all these things. So the ecological and sustainable part is because we, we're not based on solving encryption um, puzzles like, Bit, like Bitcoin is. We're, we're kind of trying to run uh, Faircoin clients on the smallest possible uh, machines and the cheapest possible machines, so we can run it on old laptops, hopefully mobile phones, Raspberry Pi, and these, these kind of much simpler kind of things. And it's not trying to be more complicated. Whereas Bitcoin is has this pressure to be more complicated, so that it's harder for newer people to come in, and so it's easier for the people who have huge factories full of computers to go on making money from it. So we also wanted to have these funds. So so an initial idea was to have a, a fund for the global south, a fund for technology. So something, for example, that everybody could get together in their eco villages and all buy solar panels together. So how could we like have collective purchases on a global scale? So this is something we've not really gotten going yet, but it's it, we've we've done in some areas. So I'll explain a bit more. So here's a lot of information about about Faircoin, but I don't want to go too much into the whole cryptocurrency thing unless someone's really interested in it. But um, but basically, yeah, we're. Uh, trying to change the what is POW, POS, is, this is a mining or minting, which is that if, if in, uh, in, in Bitcoin, if, you, if you're a miner, then you receive money for each transaction that other people are doing on the network because you're actually verifying those transactions by doing your mining. So it, it kind of makes the, the, the miners be in a position of, of more power. And then the proof of stake uh, is where um, if you have uh, funds already in your in your account, then you then you can receive more more money. So there's also distribution of income, but it's also but it's only given to people who already have something, and those are the people who verify transactions. And, and so so Purecoin was kind of step two, really. It was it was like trying to be a bit more fair, but it still it still rewards whoever already has money. So we wanted something that, that didn't really reward uh, anyone for having more. Right, or for owning more. We wanted it to be more kind of based on how aligned they were to our principles. So so talk a bit about Faircoin 2, which is, um, I hopefully will, hopefully will come out in uh, in January, February this next year. Um, um, and yeah, there we're, we're really trying to implement what would be a consensus-based uh, um, decision-making and decision-making process and a way of validating people to say, this person is, is uh, fits with our ethics. And so we're, we're going to let them into the, the group. So then there would be a group of, uh, of people who run kind of the Faircoin 2 um, machinery who would then verify all the transactions for everybody and they don't get rewarded. They only do it because they're, they're part of the network. So, so they do it as a mutual, mutual support. 
So really, it's hard to understand um, the whole uh, blockchain aspect, but, uh, but uh, I hope that's a topic for another, another talk. talk. So, um, so how, do we, how do we actually work? We're split into local nodes, and so there's a local node in Catalonia at the moment, there's uh, several around um, the Spanish territory, there's a few in Greece, uh, there's a few as, as well in South America, there's one in Vancouver, there's different ones appearing around the world, and, and they're kind of where local work happens. We still meet in person as well there, and we also take part in network meetings online. So the network, the, the kind of technology we're using just now is Telegram, which is like uh, WhatsApp. And um, we're kind of, it's not really the best technology, it's not the most secure, but it's the most uh, wide-ranging one. Most people have access to it. You don't really need a, a phone to be online the whole time, so at least we've converged to that after going through all these different, much more secure technologies but, but that people couldn't really figure out. So, um, so we all meet on, in general assemblies on, on Telegram, and we have lots of smaller assemblies as well through the month. So every month there's lots of different assemblies. Um, then we have the, the funds. At the moment, there are only two funds that are actually happening. So Freedom Co-op, which I'll talk about in a little bit, um, pays for, for uh, all the, the kind of core work that happens, maintaining the websites, all the people who do kind of um, tasks that need to be done to keep the economy rolling. So, um, so that's paid for there. And then the Refugee Fund, which was a, a crowdfunding we did, which pays for some projects as well. So, um, so we, we want to, to have more funds and have those, those pay for more things in the future. But it's still kind of being, being built. And then there's a, a kind of media team, communication team that supports local nodes going to give talks like, like this or, or, going to, or going to find more producers or, or kind of extend the network in different ways. And then, yeah, there's all the different kind of um, IT people. So there's, there's a lot of kind of uh, websites and different tools that work online that, that we have to, to maintain. So um, the CBNs are this um, network of uh, verified nodes. So they're, they're certified verified nodes. Um, which are which are running Fair Faircoin two, so they're not actually working yet, but they're we're trying to set this up so that when Faircoin two comes out, there will be enough people connected to have a viable network. So they are all people who who run the software that then verifies transactions on uh, in this cryptocurrency. So um, there's lots of different ways of participating, and they're all kind of different websites. So. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about the market, which is like an Amazon market, but for cooperative groups. Um, Freedom Co-op is like a, a tool for, for production, so it gives legal protection for production. A fair network is like a, a social network for people to join. Um, so people can, can uh, use that to communicate between each other and, and propose projects and things like that. Although now we've kind of switched more to Telegram, so most of it happens over chat, but in the beginning we were using this website to converge and, and and find things. So you can find a lot of the history of Fair Corp in the Fair Network from all the proposals that we've made. And then, yeah, you can buy or accept Fair Coin. Um, they, we have kind of different savings, kind of ways of, of keeping your savings online and keeping your savings in a, in a managed project. And this is because people still have a lot of trouble um, inventing a secure password or, or doing all these things that are quite technical. So, so we have um, kind of uh, online services to, to store your, your fair coin and to um, to exchange um, euros for fair coin. And then there's lots of different kind, types of wallets. So, so depending on what kind of um, technology you have, you can you can download a wallet and start using fair coin. So so yeah, actually it's really easy to start to start um, having access to fair coin. And if you want to start gaining fair coin, you have to produce something or, or create a service of some kind. So you don't actually have to become a member of anything to, to start to, to, to use it. So um, the local nodes are really a, the, where a lot of the work happens. And um, so in Catalonia, for example, a lot of the, the members who were members of the Catalan Antigua Cooperative have now kind of moved to, 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 fair, to the Fair Cop local node. Um, and what, what we do there is, I guess, run the local aspect of, of, uh, of, the, of all the different websites that I explained before. So if somebody wants to produce or wants to join or wants to do different things, they can always come to the local node. Uh, we have kind of different spots around Catalonia that people can come to for technical support or just general introduction to the whole thing and help to get their things set up. And, 
and then yeah, we, we, I guess um, we have different kind of uh, markets that we that we join in with as well, or, or presentations where you can buy and, and sell things as well. So we actually have produce that you can buy and sell. And in some places they have shops where they, where we don't have one yet, but we're, we're working on it. And, um, and so that would be a place where you can buy and sell everything. So, um, this can be done as well here or in different places, and there's a little guide on how to, how to create them. But basically you need kind of three people who want to who start it. And it's like any kind of local initiative, you just need to work on getting it known and then slowly it will start to happen. So this is about the refugee fund. I'm actually a, a second generation refugee of, uh, of the uh, Pinochet dictatorship in Chile. So when I arrived to, to Scotland in the 70s, it was only self-organized uh, self grassroots projects that were helping people um, who were refugees. And then a few years later, the, the government started to do stuff in a very kind of, uh, I don't know, uh, big solutions that didn't really work. So, um, so we're really working for these kind of grassroots um, and self-organized projects, so networks of people who are either refugees themselves or want to help them but don't have any funds or don't have any attachment to, to larger organizations. So. Uh